What's up guys, welcome to another installment of Software Sunday. Today we're going to be taking a look at a piece of software that can bring your files back from the graveyard. Recuva is a free piece of software that is advertised to recover a wide variety of file types. Now, why am I stressing advertised? Well, I did some testing before this video and some testing during this video as well. And it turns out it doesn't really do that great of a job of getting documents back uh, or MP3s back. And when I say documents, I mean PDFs, uh, Word documents, or text files. Now, just a really great job of recovering big video files and a lot of pictures, but documents and MP3s just came back all jumbled up and I could not get them to open up in any sort of uh, a PDF or document reader uh, or any sort of media player when it came to the MP3. So if you're trying to recover stuff like that, you might have to look elsewhere. Of course, it might also just be with the equipment I am using. I tested it out on my laptop and my desktop with a variety of storage devices, including external hard drives and flash drives uh, and those those documents and mp3s just didn't come back and as I just said uh, this can recover files from a variety of storage devices such as external hard drives, flash drives, SD cards, internal hard drives, uh, solid state drive, etc, etc. Unfortunately this piece of software is only advertised to work with Windows 10, 8, 7, Vista and XP so you Mac OS and Linux users have been left out in the cold for this episode. Now you might be able to get Recover up and running on Mac OS or Linux using something like Wine. I haven't tried it if anyone's tried it and has been successful with that please go ahead and let us know in the comment section because I am curious, everyone else is curious, and I might have to try that out after this uh, episode and make a comment myself because I do have Zubin 2 along with Windows 10 up and running on this laptop, so it'll be pretty interesting to see if I can get Recuva up and uh, working on my Linux installation. So let me present to you just a few scenarios where this really comes in handy. So let's say you're borrowing a flash drive from someone. That flash drive has a couple baby pictures on it. Uh, you transfer all of your files over and then afterwards you format the flash drive because you forgot there were baby pictures on it. And you know, if you hand the flash drive back without the baby pictures on them, you're absolutely screwed. So what do you do at that point? Well, you take your flash drive, you plug it into your laptop, you open up Recuva and you get those baby pictures back. And I'll throw one more at you. Let's say your hard drive's having some sort of issues, you can't get into your operating system, um, and you know, you have a couple important files on said hard drive. You can take your hard drive out, plug it into another computer with Recover on it, and you can open up Recover, get some files. So today I'm going to show you where to get Recover. I'm going to walk you through the installation process, and then I'm actually going to use it to recover a couple files. So let's go ahead and move over to the screencast. Let's get our hands on Recuva. So at this point, you can go ahead and pop open your internet browser. In my case, I am using Chrome. So just going to open up Chrome. It should go right to Google. And in Google, go ahead and type in Recuva. The Recuva page on the Preform website should be the first search result to pop up. And of course, I'm going to include this link in the description if you just want to use that to make your life a lot easier. But go ahead and click on the link. And they give you a little bit more information down here. Most of it I have already touched on. If you want to read it, you can, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So we're going to scroll back up, click on free download. It's going to take you to the bottom of the page. Click on free download again. Of course, I also have a professional version. It does a little bit more uh, than the free version does, but for most cases and more, most uses, I find that the free version is perfectly adequate. So click on that free download link. And you can choose either the file hippo mirror or the preform mirror. I prefer to download it directly from the preform mirror so uh, that's what I usually do go ahead and click on that we're gonna go ahead and start the download and as you can see the setup has gone to my downloads directory and I just had one of those realizations where I believe I've been pronouncing the company name and the software name wrong this whole time I started out calling the company Preform, and I think it's pronounced Pureform or something like that. It's P I R I F O R M. And then I realized that I've been saying Recuvra instead of Recuva. Uh, I threw an extra R in there for some reason. So I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of stuff about that. And uh, yeah, sorry guys. I'm not going to go back and fix it. It's just not really one of those things that's worth it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the installation now. As you can see, I migrated over from my desktop to my laptop because my desktop already has Recuva. Uh, set up on it because I do use it on my desktop uh, and this laptop does not. So we're going to go ahead and install Recuva to my laptop. I have the setup file right here. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. 
yes, we want to install it. All right, so setup we're going to do through the installation. Yeah, next English, that looks good. Uh, start menu shortcuts, yeah. Uh, no, not that one. Nope. Of course, this is this is also their software, but uh, not really wanting that right now. And we're just looks like it is installing now. All right, that was weird. I'm not sure why it brought up that dialog window, but as you can see, Recuvera is up and running now. That was a very easy, very painless installation process. Now that Recuva is installed, let's go ahead and see what it can do. As you can see, I have two flash drives in my hands right now. This one has four images on it, and this one has a gigantic video file on it. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to wipe them both and try to recover the files. Of course, I'm also going to do a demonstration with the hard drive on this machine. But first, let's try to recover data from these two flash drives. So I'm going to go ahead and plug both of them in. I don't know how many times I've said I'm going to go ahead, but I'm probably just going to keep on saying it. I hope you guys haven't been annoyed by that too much. But as you can see, I have four images on that Skullcraft flash drive, and there's a gigantic video file uh, on the SanDisk flash drive. Well, going to delete that video file. Goodbye. And I'm going to get rid of all these images. Oh no, I deleted all my files. What do I do now? Well, what we're going to do is going to recover us. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Pop that open. Yes. And it's going to bring up a little wizard. It's going to go ahead and walk you through the setup process for the uh, instance of recover us. So we're going to hit next. I want to recover video files. I'm going to recover the video files first. And then on a specific location, it's going to be on our flash drive. And pop that open. Go to the flash drive. I think this one is removable disk D. Yes, it is because it is a 30 gigabyte flash drive. The other one is a 8 gigabyte flash drive. Okay, that's all good. Next. And most of the times, I find it really convenient to just go ahead and enable deep scan uh, because sometimes it just won't find the files unless you actually enable that. So, yes, enable deep scan and start. The only bad thing about the deep scan is that it does take quite a while. It does a really great job of finding all of your deleted files, but it just takes forever. As you can see, estimated time left 20 minutes, so it looks like I'm going to have to go off and do something else. For the image recovery, I think I'm not going to enable deep scan, and we should uh, still be able to get all those images back. So in the end, it found 5,000 files, but since we selected the video option, it's only giving us the videos that it found, and there's only a few uh, that I actually transfer to this flash drive. So you can see the one that we actually want right here. This is the Dell Inspiron 3521 battery upgrade video. I believe this was the last video that I upgraded to YouTube, and we're going to go ahead and try to recover it. Uh, now, the weird thing is, this is the last file that was on this flash drive but it's actually showing the condition as poor, and that might just be because of the size of the file. It's 2.5 gigs, um, and it's going to be interesting to see if we can actually recover this using Recuvera. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark that, and all you have to do from there is click Recover. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just put it on the desktop to make things easy. Now, according to Recuva, the video has been partially recovered. I'm going to close out of this. Okay, sounds good. We're going to close out this. Uh, just minimize these so we can actually get to the desktop. You can see the video is on my desktop right here. I'm going to open it with VLC and see what it gives us. I'm going to crank the volume up too to see how the audio is. Uh, there we go. Open with VLC. place in that box so uh, that's kind of a you know my laptop carrying case because if it doesn't it's a bit easier to type so that is nice let's go ahead and turn this, this battery and we'll check out how long the old battery lasts and of course we're going to compare the two it's even going to last this long I've been jumping through the video to check things out and there is some distortion here and there but for the most part it looks okay. It is a bit jumpy and I just think that's because of the laptop that I'm using. This, this is a 60 FPS video at 1080p so uh, a little bit too much for this laptop. I'm going to move the file over to my flash drive again and try to play it back on my desktop and see how it looks over there. 
The flash drive is plugged in, the video file has finally finished transferring and I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open in VLC. There we go. Just skip through it. This is a lot heavier than that. Just as I suspected, it is a lot smoother on this computer. Let's go ahead and try to recover those images now. And it actually looks like it did a pretty good job with the video file. It said it was a partial recovery, but it looks like it got most of the data out of that. So that is great. I'm going to pop open Recover again. And we're going to grab those image files back from the dead. Come on, Recover. Or Recover. There we go. I'm pronouncing it wrong again. Next. Okay, so this time we want pictures. So I'm going to select pictures. Next in a specific location, flash drive E. Yes, okay. And we're not gonna do a deep scan this time because it just took way too long last time and I think we should be able to get all those images back by just doing the standard scan. So I'm gonna start. And wow, will you look at that? It already grabbed all of them. That is great. So I'm gonna recover all of them. Oh my goodness. Recover, and we'll just put it back on the desktop. All right, fully recovered all of those files. Let's have a look at them. Beautiful, it did a great job. For this demonstration, I'm gonna work with some smaller files again, just to speed things up. This video is becoming lengthy, so I wanna cut it down as much as I can. We already know that this can recover the big stuff, so I'm just gonna show you that can indeed recover files from a hard drive, in this case, a solid state drive, and I have a traditional hard drive right here that we will test as well. So I'm gonna to toss this in. You guys know the drill already. Empty it. And we're gonna get it back. Yay, there's our four files. You guys know the process already. I don't need to walk you guys through it. So we're just going to flip through these. And they all look good. All right, let's move on to that traditional hard drive. Moving on to our external hard drive. This is a 5,400 RPM, 320 gigabyte Western Digital blue hard drive in here. Obviously a 2.5 inch drive. Just going to lay that to the side and we're going to recover the same four images off. And as you can see, I'm talking really fast because we are starting to get over the 10 minute mark and I start to lose people at that point. Uh, there we go. We're going to delete these. Bye-bye. And guess what? We're going to get them back. Just as we did last time. It didn't send them to the recycling bin, did it? You know what? I think it did. So we're going to empty the recycling bin. Get out of here. Out of here. There we go. And we're going to scan for deleted files. I'm going to use the menu this time so I could use uh, the different options. I just want to get pictures back. I don't feel like combing through all this stuff. Well, you look at that. There's the four images. Recover. Gonna put it on the desktop again. There we go. Totally covered four files. And dot, 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 dot. And everything looks great. Overall, Recuva is a pretty decent piece of software. It's easy to use. It gets the job done for the most part. And of course, it's free. Uh, now, there are some things that is hit and miss on, like the documents and the audio files. Um, and then also, when I was testing it, there were some instances where a couple video files I just couldn't get back uh, and a couple images as well just didn't come back. Uh, so there are some situations where it won't be able to recover files. It really depends on the situation, the hardware, the hard drive, your device that you're uh, grabbing the files back. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, but most of the time I was successful in getting those files back. It's probably about 30% of the times that uh, they don't really come back at all. So this is a great last resort if your mom or significant other is about to cut your head off or, or something worse uh, and you need to get some files back quick or maybe you accidentally deleted some video files like I do a lot and you need those back because you need to get them uploaded and out to YouTube. So that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can like us on Facebook if you want to stay up to date with everything. And of course, if you want to support the channel, you can use my Amazon affiliate link, which will be in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.